us here today. Um, it is my 58th birthday today, and Tommy wants me to meet him somewhere here in Huntsville. I guess he's going to take me to dinner or something. But I'm here at the church doing a little bit of work. Um, some of the new signage that I have uh, ordered for the church came in today. So I'm stepping outside so I can share some of this with you all. We have four big windows on the front of our space um, as you come down the little walkway at the front here. And uh, I'm going to show you the signs that we now have in each of these spaces. Turn the camera around. This, of course, is our first. And this is, I can't really back up far enough for you to see the whole thing clearly. But obviously that lets people know who we are, when and where we meet. And then in the next window, we have this scripture being shared for my house shall be called in house of prayer for all people, Isaiah 56 and 7. The next window down the line, I need to clean the glass and I will be doing that, has a sign. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, Hebrews 6 and 1 from the NIV. And then, of course, our door. And the last window is just another church sign with our church logo, service time, and web address on it. We do hang up a sign on the rail in front of our space. We have this rail here. And uh, you'll notice that drive back there is raised. It goes up to a little bit higher level. Anyone with mobility issues can drive up that driveway, park in the back parking lot. And there is a uh, ramp from the back parking lot to the second level. So you don't have to try to negotiate the second level. This sign, we hang out every Sunday on the railing to try to make it easier for people to find us as well. There you go. We have seating to have a third row of seats here, and there's plenty of room for a third row of seats. The only problem is the rooms off to the side you know, the doors would be right up against it. So uh, we kind of are leaving that clear. And then if we need those seats, obviously we'll put them in. But in the meantime, we have three on this side and two on this side with a nice white center aisle. And uh, I was finally able to get our monitors up and running get them mounted. I still have to redirect the wires and what have you so that uh, they're not visible. <laughs> but this old preacher can only do so much at a time. And then as you can see, we of course have uh, draperies in the windows. And that is for the sake of privacy for our attendees. Then back here at the back of the sanctuary, we have a nice little area for fellowship as well. But again, those tables can be folded and we could use this for seating should the need ever arise. And some of y'all probably thinking, boy, this preacher is out of his mind to even be talking about the need arising. Well, I went today downstairs. Uh, we have a um, AA facility in this building downstairs from us. So there were several people hanging out in front today. And I went down there and handed out some invites and let them know that we're up here and we'd be more than happy to have them participate. 
And I explained to them, of course, that we are a fully LGBT affirming ministry. And that is not a bait and switch like you find a lot of churches fib and they say, oh, we welcome LGBT people. Yeah, you welcome them because the minute you get them in the sanctuary, you're trying to change them. You're condemning them. You're criticizing them. You're preaching against them. That is not the case, obviously, in this church. Uh, you know, you have to remember, I'm an LGBT pastor. I've been with my partner for almost 22 years. It'll be 22 years in December. And um, we got married legally when it was available to us in 2015. So we've been legally married as of October uh, 10th. Um, we'll be married for eight years legally. And uh, our church is going to be offering many, many things in the future to support and educate and encourage people in relationships. We're going to be offering stuff to help people who are single. Uh, we are going to have support fellowships for people in recovery. And, um, and we're going to have one in particular for people who are struggling with reconciling being LGBT and being uh, a believer. So these are all part of the vision that I've had for many, many, many years. Um, I shared, just in case anybody was interested in looking at it and listening, um, when I was ordained back in 1994, um, we did not have videotape capabilities at that time. However, we did audio tape our services. So I created a video with the audio from my ordination service. And um, I included, I shared some pictures and things at the beginning of the video uh, to kind of show some of the spiritual influences that I've had in my life, pastors that I had, um, men that I genuinely loved and admired and appreciated. You know, the Bible says you reap what you sow. And I have always loved and admired and respected my pastors. And uh, that is something that I was raised, you know, believing. And I, n I never had any reason not to. And um, these men all sowed uh, tremendous positive, positive things into my life into my spirit and into my ministry. And so at the beginning of the video, I share some photos of some of the preachers who have been influential in my life, churches that I uh, have, have been a big part of my life, the church I was dedicated to the Lord in as a baby, um, the church I was raised in, the church that uh, Brother Gillum pastored, that was um, my entry into the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, you know, and the church that I made the transition into the Apostolic Pentecostal movement uh, through. And uh, so if you want to look at that video, you can go to our Facebook group or our Facebook page. Uh, just look up in Facebook uh, forward and then capital C, capital L, capital C. So forward, capital C, capital L, capital C. And that should bring up the page or the group. And either one of those, you'll be able to see the ordination video that I shared. As I've said before, it really dawned on me recently that the people of Huntsville are brand new to us. They don't know anything about us. And uh, there's a lot of trepidation. When I went downstairs a little while ago to hand invitations to 
the people who are waiting maybe for an AA group to start, whatever the case might be. Um, there was one man in particular that I saw drive in and go over there, and he looked to me like he might be part of the community. And I thought, oh, I want to make sure I get him an invitation, especially. So I went down there and I gave several people invitations. And when I went to give him one, he just waved it off. And I thought, well, for heaven's sakes, you know, you're the one person I saw. I didn't say this, obviously, but I thought it. You know, I thought, well, you're the one person I saw that I expressly wanted to be able to to let know about our church, you know, and he wound up declining an invite. So what can you do? You do the best you can. Anyway, I'm about to go meet Tommy after work, and um, but I wanted to come by the church and put our new signs up. I wish you could see them better, but with the reflection on the glass, it was kind of hard, but uh, they look good. And um, hopefully they're large enough so that people can see them from the parking lot below. I also have some small arrow signs coming so that on Sunday we'll be able to put them out along the, the walkway outside to help people find us and make sure they can find us on Sundays at 3 o'clock. Anyway, folks, love you, appreciate you. Keep me in your prayers. I made 58 today, but tomorrow is never promised. And um, keep me in your prayers. I appreciate you, appreciate your prayerful support. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow night. Um, tomorrow night, in lieu of Bible study, I feel led to do something a little bit different tomorrow. Um, we're actually going to have tomorrow what I am billing, you might say, as a prophetic conversation. I want to talk to the church. I want to talk to God's people about things that are going on in America right now, things that are happening, and what the Lord has shown me, um, warnings that he's issued, um, just uh clarifications. There are times that prophetically, the Lord will help us to understand what's happening and why it's happening. And because uh, a lot of times stuff goes on and, and we have no understanding of why these things are happening. But tomorrow night, we're going to have a prophetic conversation. Then next Wednesday, beginning next Wednesday, I believe what we're going to do is we're going to have a series of Bible studies on Wednesday night that will deal with LGBT issues. Since we're new to this community, um, and many people here may not have been exposed to uh, sound teaching concerning what we often refer to as the clobber passages, meaning biblical passages that are commonly used against uh, and in condemnation of LGBT people. Uh, since many people here may never have been exposed to um, an expose on those scriptures, we're going to be doing that for the next several weeks, okay? We'll talk about everything from Romans 1 to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll be looking at the Levitical law. Um, we're also going to be looking at the scriptures that are used uh, in opposition of transgendered people. As I've said before, when I say our ministry is LGBT affirming, I mean it. I've known many, many, many transgendered people over the years. Um, I have uh, to be honest with you, many years ago, I dated some. And, uh, you know, I have no problem in the world with people who are transgendered. And uh, many of the people that I know have told me, they said, we don't even feel comfortable. We don't even feel welcome in a uh, LGBT affirming church. It's like, you know, they, they tag us on at the end of LGBT, but they really don't include us, you know, really 
as part of the, I guess you might say, the alternative community, you know. And this church does. We welcome transgender, transsexual people. Um, that is not an issue for us. You are fully welcome. We will love you. We will embrace you. We will include you. And um, that's not an issue that in this church you're going to find uh, causes any division or any strife. All right. Anyway, I appreciate you all. Pray for me. And we hope to see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. God bless you in Jesus' name is our prayer.